Hey guys, it's Mark. Welcome back from Ericsson Machine. Today we're going to be looking at this Kawasaki 900 cylinder that blew up really badly. You can see the sleeve is damaged and there's aluminum everywhere. So we are going to take the cylinder, we're going to clean it with muriatic acid, bore it, set it up for a sleeve, and get it back to 100% again. Let's get started, guys. So here we go, we're using muriatic acid. I don't know if you can see the fumes coming off of it. Obviously we're outside. So all we're doing is removing the aluminum off the bore so that we can get our center hole location for sleeving this. So you can see it melting all the aluminum away. I've done a whole video on this, but is kind of showing it in other use. There we go. Show you when we're all done. Here we go. Now if you see all the aluminum's off the wall, so now we can center it up for the sleeve. All right guys, so here we go. We've got the cylinder mounted. This is the bad hole. This is the sleeve. This is the size of this sleeve. So we will end up boring this to around five thousandths under this, so 3.058, somewhere around there. Um, we will stop. We will then machine this upper lip the exact size. We'll take it out. We'll hone it so that there's a thousandth and a half interference. So this is a repair sleeve. Um, there are two style sleeves for these engines. There is a repair sleeve, which just goes in, um, or a replacement sleeve, which then you machine this entire sleeve out. Give me a second, let me explain. All right, so let me explain the difference. So on like a Yamaha 701, um, Sea-Doo's, stuff like that, that have cast iron sleeves, the sleeves are machined into the aluminum and then heat shrunk and put in, which I've showed it on their videos. Kawasaki, on the other hand, on much of their stuff, they use cast-in sleeves. So if you notice, I cut this one apart for a porting video, but this explains. So these sleeves are actually in the foundry mold when they cast these cylinders. So these can't just be removed because you can see the ridges in them. This is a 650 cylinder, but it's almost the same as that 900 so we can't we have to end up to machine this out we have to machine past all of this stuff for it to clear out but then you end up with a really fat sleeve so as long as you know only the bottom area this sleeve is slightly damaged on the one we're doing so what we will do is we'll machine it it'll still be cast iron and this will drop into the cast iron which also we don't need as much of an interference fit because it's cast iron to cast iron. When this is set in, it will never come out again. For this one to come out again, it will have to be machined out. But if we're not doing all three, it's better to do it this way because then the internal volume on the cylinder stays the same. Just explaining the difference between the two and what the difference actually is. Let's go back to the boring bar. All right, so the bars are all set up, ready to bore. We're going to take multiple cuts on this. All right, here we go. Open it up some more. All right, so here we go. I didn't film all of it. We've done several cuts on this. Um, we are now, so right now, 
the finish size of this sleeve on the outside is 3.636. So we are boring this to 3.57, which gives us a little over five thousandths to play with. Now we're only going to leave a thousandth and a half or so of interference fit so that'll be a two, so we'll end up honing basically exactly five. After I bore this, we will set it back up and do the counter bore, and then we'll get ready to heat it up and drop the sleeve in. So we now got this board to within five thousandths of the final size. Now what we're going to do is we set this cutter up, just like the other one. So this is a counter bore cutter. You can see the standard boring cutters like this. Um, this gives us a flat. Now you can use the indexable ones from Beam Equipment that we always use. They also make um, the braze cutters which work great. All of them work awesome. It just depends on what you use and what you like to use. So let me set this up. I'll set the indicator. I'll show you what we do. And let's counter bore this. All right, so here we go. We have the counter bore tool in. We have just a magnetic block on the bar and our indicator stand. So what we will do, we will start up the bar. We will let it just touch and kiss the surface. We'll set the zero. And then this height is 205 thousandths. So we're going to end up cutting like 199 to 200 thousandths deep, which will leave us five thousandths to skim off the top and have all the ports aligned. So the way I figure this out is basically we measure where the ports are and how relative it is so that everything lines up when we're done. In general, most sleeves that don't have like O-ring grooves, like a C-Do 800 or certain c stuff, most sleeves come five thousandths taller so that you can deck it afterwards and you get a nice finish. So you don't want to go the whole depth. You want to leave it proud or sticking up a little bit. So let me get this started. All right, so we had the zero set perfectly. There we go. Now I hand feed this, I don't do it with a power feed. There we go. You can see the counter bore. All right, let's get her out and get ready to drop a sleeve in. All right, guys, so here we go. We're all set up, so now it is bored. We have the top chamfer cut. It is machined. And we are four before right now. So we are now just gonna hone this to the exact size which will be a thousandth and a half smaller than the sleeve. Then we'll heat it up and drop the sleeve in. Let's get started. All right, so this is now honed to exact size. So now we will clean this up. Heat it up and drop the sleeve in. All right, so here we go. So the cylinder is heating. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put sleeve retaining compound just at the top. I always do this as an added protection just to make sure we don't leak water, although we really shouldn't either way. 
so I just put a thin ring just at the top so that is it set this here I take the cylinder out we'll drop the sleeve in align it and clamp it so now when I drop these in I drop them in barehanded because it's easier to align everything I found but it can also be a little tricky So now what I do, now all we're doing there is making sure that that sleeve, when it cools, doesn't pop back up. Now we'll let it cool down. We'll get it set up. We'll deck it, bore all the holes, and be ready to rock and roll again. So here we go. Sleeves installed, lined up, all matches up how it should. Now we'll pull the pins, deck it, bore it, hone it and send it let's go guys all right let's get her decked up go nice and done sleeve told that we got a bore the other two Just get it off this machine get her bored get her done all right so we got the cylinder out of the mill it has been decked you can see it's sleeved you can see the sleeve fits perfectly just how it was supposed to now what we're going to do we're going to bore the three holes I'm just going to set up and show the one We'll throw it in the hone, hone it, chamfer it, and this thing will be ready to make power again. Have fun. All right, so it's out of the boring bar. We already got these two. Now, just so you can see with the cast-in cylinders, which I was explain, explaining before, so you can see they're not always perfectly centered. So if you see, like, this is thicker than here, this is thinner than there. Now the sleeved one that we just did, which is this one, you can see is perfect all the way around. Um, this is one of the issues that you can get in with some of these cast cylinders. You know, these, this cylinder was bored, I think, 25 over before this failure already. So my guess is the person that bored it last time had it a little farther off than they should have. It's really not going to affect anything. Um, it also could be, you know, I've seen these when they get cast be pretty far off. So it could be that as well. Um, you know, some of the table style boring bars where they bore from the top down instead of the style that I use these, you know, when you use a centering cone like those table bars use, it's really not that accurate. These fingers will get you within a thousandth of an inch, um, which is why I prefer, you know, this style boring bar over those table bars. 
Uh, not knocking on the table bars because for many years that's what we ran. Um, just saying the reason we don't use them anymore because these work better and are far more accurate. So let's get to honing and get this thing to size. All right, so what we're going to do, one, we're going to clean that one little spot where it got dinged. We're going to just grind on it a little bit. There we go. All we're doing is giving it a finish that epoxy can grab onto. Now, in all honesty, where this is, it probably would seal okay, but we're going to make it perfect because we're here, and why not? So, but you can see everything lines up as it should, port lines up as it should, like the rest. This is done being honed. This is the last step. Let me get some epoxy in it and let it harden. So there we go, it's all done. Now you can see the epoxy work I just touched with a truing stone. Um, hold on one second, let me show you that. I use these stones to clean up gasket surfaces to make sure everything's flat. Um, you can buy them from McMaster, I'll put a link down below. Um, so basically all you do is you go different angles you know granted the epoxy sands way easier than the aluminum does just to make sure it's flat i don't know if you can see this but it is perfectly flat which where this is it's not going to affect anything and leave you a perfect gasket surface so you can see the sleeves all in the ports all match up pretty just as good as the stock one did at least guys like these videos please like the video share and subscribe it's greatly appreciated and if you want pick up some merch at ericksonmmp.com it really helps the channel out to make more content like this thanks guys have a great day